Welcome to another episode of Run Right to Don't Die, official podcast of the Gamecast Network. Each week we pick an interesting topic to discuss, chat about the latest video game and industry news, and have a bunch of fun in the process. I'm your host, Shaka Panda. With me today, as always, is my co-host, Vox. What's up, my man? Shaka, 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 my man. I am here as always, and I'm doing pretty well, all things considered. But as always, it's not about me, Shaka. It's not about you. It's about the guest. And today we've got Snowy from the news team. Snowy, how you doing, buddy? I'm pretty damn fine. Hello, everybody who's listening to my shambles of a voice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dude, it's fun to have you back on here. It's always good to have Snowy on because then we can get really deep into the news. In fact, so deep. Snowy uh. is head of the news team on Gamecast and uh, is definitely in the know about all of the news things, which of course lately has been a little frustrating considering there's been one story that just won't go away, which we'll get to later. Oh boy. <laughs> Makes me want to cry. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I know every time I see a new video come up from you and that topic it's comes up, which again, again. <laughs> will we'll keep you guys in a suspense. It's just like, you're just like, oh, why? Can you please just stop? There's more. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so today we'll be talking about what we've been playing lately, a little bit of video game news, and then the topic of the show is making your own fun. Ooh. Our favorite and most memorable experiences of just creating our own fun in a video game, especially if it has nothing to do with or maybe is in some way counter to the actual gameplay loop as it's meant to be. So a little little creative fun making uh, plans here, so that's, that's always fun. But first, a little housekeeping. Last week, we had some serious technical issues oh, and boy. actually didn't even record a podcast. Mm -hmm. That's why we ended up sharing one of our test podcasts from the Run Right, Don't Die Alpha Run. And it was actually kind of fun to give you guys a little peek behind the green screen, and hopefully that won't happen again. <laughs> um, Vox and I have been talking about ways, brainstorming ways for us to be prepared and have some episodes in the can. And our current strategy is to... Uh, brainstorm and come up with some evergreen episodes, some evergreen content that won't uh, evergreen, meaning that it will not become less and less relevant as time goes on. And that will allow us to have a couple things sort of sitting aside. And uh, that podcast, when it does come out, probably won't have any news because obviously that would date it. But uh, we'll come up with some fun discussion topics, stuff that doesn't have anything to do with becoming fragile with time and getting weaker and weaker and less interesting to listen to as time goes on. And that way we can always have something for you guys, even if life gets in the way, because it has a tendency to oh, do don't that. Don't get me started on how life gets in the way. Ugh. Super fucking salty. <laughs> Jeez. I am made of salt right now. I like, have no idea. Dude, well, it was crazy because my internet was all jacked up and we were like literally re like installing a new modem and there was just no internet. And I had to like be like, can you guys cover for me today? You know, Vox, how about you host? And I'm doing this all for my phone. And then like uh, Vox never shows up. And then the next thing you know, I get a message from him later on. He's like, so they literally cut the internet for my entire oh, no, building. No, no, no. It wasn't the internet. It wasn't the internet. They cut power to the entire building the entire thing we had no power nobody had any power we were all boiling in our ac in our units it was a nightmare i mean I, just trying to get anything done was already hard enough and it's funny enough that you mentioned that you were talking from your phone because it just so happens that when i typed whatever i typed uh, to discord it was from my phone as well and i wasn't able to get on earlier because it just so happened that my phone was out of power and i was about to charge it when i found out oh and then your power was out exactly awesome <laughs> oh man i can taste the salt from uh, here <laughs> or would you like some uh, would you like your steak salted i have enough to spare <laughs> no yep that was that was that was just an absolute like legendary clusterfuck of bad just random out of our control things happening all at once. <laughs> but hopefully we'll be able to cover things moving forward. Vox and I will plan out and do a couple of just little evergreen episodes and have them ready to rock and roll next time something like that comes around, because inevitably it will. Uh, the Gamecast Discord is ready for the public. If you haven't already, come join us in the GC Discord. The whole team is always on there goofing around, and it's a great way to get in touch with your favorite Gamecast members. Visit and submit mailbag questions and topics for the podcast. So follow the link in the description below or show notes of this episode and join us in the ever-growing Gamecast Discord community. Yeah, it's actually really fun. We were not ready entirely when the launch <laughs> happened, and there was a little bit of scrambling happening the Sunday that the first Run Right Don't Die came out because it's part of our 
outro <laughs> to talk about the discord and that's as it's always been and then i realized that as i'm editing and i'm like oh wait i don't know if our discord's ready for just the public yet like it's pretty much everything is you know you have to be in a certain team to be able to see it and it's all totally behind the scenes and so i'm like sully sully you got to put something up there man <laughs> so that has since been then dialed in so it's a it's a really super cool community and it's the best way to get a hold of any of us set up opportunities to join us with uh, multiplayer or hang out out or maybe get in on some of the community stuff going on as it grows. So that's that's going to be just a whole bunch of fun. I'll be looking forward to you guys joining us on there. And of course, it's the best place to submit mailbag questions um, or even suggest topics for the podcast. That's that's where we're going to be doing that. I'm sure we'll set up an email as well. But honestly, it's probably just easier to do it through there for everybody because that's kind of where our core community will likely hang out. Hmm. Well, that's it for housekeeping. Why don't we go ahead and move into controller confessions? This is the section of the podcast where we go around and chat about what we've been playing lately, no matter how embarrassing. You're the guest today, Count. What are you, uh, <laughs> what are you been playing, man? Well, I've been playing a few different things for a little, like a small amount of time. The t- thing I put the most, yeah, yeah. That's, that's just how life works, really. Um, <laughs> the things I've been putting most time into are Duck Game and Keep Talking Explodes. And nobody explodes, Ooh. sorry. Keep Talking and Explosions. Yes. Um, I played both of those <laughs> on a live stream with Orange Lightning, who's on the review team. And though that was very fun. The highlights of the stream for Duck Game have gone up on my channel, and Orange is getting the highlights for Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. But I've also been playing a lot of City Skylines because I happened to uh, rebuy or I happened to buy the. DLC bits that I was missing, so I now have a lot of monorails in a town that I'm building. You, the entire town is Gen- just... Genuinely, every fucking road on my town <laughs> is done with monorail, like a monorail above it. I've not done a single one without it that's not highway. Oh, how Amazing. funny, man. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> what, I mean... I've never really been too terribly into the city building games. I always find myself feeling kind of like, I don't really want to be a mayor. That doesn't sound like a good time. (laughs) I mean, I did sort of struggle when I was starting this town, actually. I don't know whether it's because of the roads or whether I was just trying to do everything too quickly, but I really struggled until, like, not too long ago. (laughs) I was just like, I was in about 60 grand's worth of debt, and I was like, no, I can't build anything either, and everyone wants industry, and what's happening? Why can't I do anything? But (laughs) <laughs> so when you overcome those kinds of moments, then it's just like, ah, oh, ah, oh, it's so satisfying. And I overcame that. And, now, and the answer was lots of monorails. Yes. <laughs> you, you know what? You, Give the people what they want. You say that. Public transport in that game is probably the most useful thing you can set up because traffic really? becomes a pain so quickly if you're not careful about what you're doing with the roads. You need to be. You need to manage that traffic flow so carefully because it all makes a difference. And every single car that gets loaded into the world is going somewhere, doing something, going from somewhere, and it'll try and take a route there, even if that route's terrible. We could use someone like you in DC. (laughs) Oh, but is the is the traffic and everything really miserable in DC, dude? Oh, you know it's funny. Here's a bit of a a bit of a fun fact. Two fun facts about DC. One, we have more taxis per square mile than New York. <laughs> Hi. Like, what? Yes, we it, statistically speaking, we have more taxis per square mile than New York, and New York has a crap load of taxis. And two... That's, yeah, New York is basically solid city. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And That's two, insane. <laughs> DC's, the way DC traffic uh, patterns are designed, it's impossible to get around. Like, in New York, at least, when you go down a street, all the lights will be green until they turn red. In DC, no, you go down one block, the light is green, and then you get to the other one, and it's red, and then when that one turns green, the other one's turning yellow, and then when that one's turning yellow, the other one's turning red. Oh my god. Well, man, Vox, what have you been playing lately, dude? Well, uh, given, given my current situation, and uh, I may or may not cover that later, I have been playing a lot of mobile games, because I Ugh. just can't muster up the energy to just <laughs> get to my computer. I'm kind of bedridden, constantly. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> So I've been playing uh, another mobile game uh, called Goddess Kiss. Have you guys heard of it? I have not. Uh, what goddess? Uh, well, as in it, a female god? Uh, well, no, actually, the, oh. the, the the name itself had, doesn't have much to do with the game. 
It's about <laughs> uh, this this organization. It's the classic, you know, uh, one guy takes over the world with a virus and it's up to the resistance to take him down. Well, it just so happens that the resistance is composed entirely of anime women in miniskirts and mechas. Lots nice. and lots of mechas. <laughs> and it sounds like a good a time. Korean Oh, it is a good time. It's, it's, it? not, it's actually, it's supposed to be, you know, Japanese, but it's actually Korean. Uh, and oh, it's yeah. a really awful English translation. I'm just constantly laughing at the translations. It's great. And um, and so the premise of the game, it's kind of an RTS style game. Each, each faction takes their turn and, you know, you get to do power ups in the middle of your attacks if you have enough points to do so. Uh, but here's the best part, or the, the worst part, depending on your on your perspective and whether or not you're an easily offended feminist. Um, whenever the girls reach a critical <laughs> damage Why level, uh, their that? clothes kind of explode off, and uh, not completely. Like it's it's still somewhat allowed on the Apple on the Play Store, you know. Uh, so they, they just their clothes kind of fall off with more with the more damage they take. Uh, it's just you know, it's like a health bar. It's a sexy it's like health, a bar. health bar. It's a very <laughs> sexy health bar. Uh, no, you know, there is a rich tradition of Japanese, <laughs> like, especially portable games, like on the PSP, where that's how you look as you get more damaged. It's not a bar. It's just less clothes. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a good visual aid. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> oh, God. It's a very what good are you doing aid. while playing this game? Jeez. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I don't tell you how to live your life count, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay. I'm looking at this game. Game. This, I'm sorry, but this looks fucking atrocious. <laughs> it is. It's awful, but amazing. This looks like the just the standard shitty microtransaction ridden hell of mobile oh, gaming. Great. Oh, it is. I will not it be is. playing this. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, my God. No, I found no, an no, image of somebody's like... clothes getting ripped. <laughs> oh, God. Hell. If you'd like an actually <laughs> decent mobile game that's not full of microtransactions, try Tiny DD. It's a Metroidvania in the, in the Game Boy style, and it had, an ad pops up every so often, but other than that, it's completely free, and there's no microtransactions, and it's a decent enough playing Metroidvania. There you go. God, I hate mobile gaming! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mobile gaming is rough. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, the, the only other thing I've been playing, and this is actually an old favorite of mine, is a game also on mobile called Doom and Destiny. And this is actually a really decent game. Think really old-style Final Fantasy, like the first or second one. And um, it follows an entirely goofy storyline. Like, the guys who made this, you can tell, did not take their their storyline seriously. Like, it just, it spans so many references. Like, there's so many references of different games and series. It's insane. But all in all, it actually is a really solid game. Uh, instead of the typical, you know, mage and warrior and rogue and whatever styles that you have, you have your mage, you have your ninja, you have your warrior and then you have your pirate who's your healer <laughs> and, why is the pirate the healer when, when you in history is like, oh, <laughs> what do pirates do you know they cast magic spells that heal you that's the plan no, they give you they give you rum rum is the best medicine exactly exactly <laughs> is he that heals what happens you bottles of rum oh my god that's yes. amazing <laughs> he throws bottles of rum at you and you heal yes. it's it's like and the storyline is actually for a completely cocked up game, it, it the storyline is actually pretty solid. So I honestly recommend it. There are there's like one microtransaction in the game, and that's to unlock the full version. Oh, boo! But, I mean, the game itself is complete. You, you just get a lot of ads every now and then. It is yeah. actually on Steam, incidentally. Is it really? It's on Steam for six ninety nine, and its reviews are actually overwhelmingly positive. I told you. And its full title is Doom and Destiny: The Flying Spaghetti Fantasy Adventure. Yes. Of yes, course. Yes. That's a yes. perfectly normal thing. It is perfectly normal. Aren't you a pastafarian? I'm offended, Cap. <laughs> uh, anyway. I always forget but... that that exists, and then it gets brought up, and I'm like, ah, oh, the world <laughs> is good sometimes. <laughs> whoa, whoa, anyway. Enough, enough about me, Shaka. You know what's coming, buddy. You know what's coming. Oh, God. What are you hiding behind that sexy beard of yours, Shaka? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> He's the only am... one with a sexy beard count. He's the only oh, one. You don't count. Gauntlet Throne. I am the count. Of course I count. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Puns! Uh, Fuck you. you so much. My beard is the best beard. <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> well, what I am have been playing lately is primarily I've been playing Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. 
And nice. for those of you that aren't familiar with that, it is a third-person action-adventure RPG-type game that came out a little while back on PS3, and then they did a big, huge update that added a ton of content to the game, which was the Dark Arisen part of that. And then they actually combined them, instead of it just being a DLC, into the Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen as like a single game that comes with everything, kind of like a Game of the Year edition sort of thing. And it's super duper duper awesome. I played a substantial amount of it on the PlayStation 3 when it first came out, and then eventually picked it up on the PC, intending to work my way through the whole thing, but, you know, it's a big, long game. In fact, it's the kind of game that has multiple playthroughs and New Game Plus and stuff if you are so inclined. And so, it's uh, the kind of thing that you could just fall into and never come out. Uh, and which is which would be a good time because it's a lot of fun. It has an amazing combat system. It's pretty handsome, especially considering how old it is and how big the world is and everything. It, it actually looks really good. Yeah, I'm looking at the screenshots on Steam. Fucking hell, some of this stuff's beautiful. Oh, like, dude, it's a, it's a beautiful game. But the thing, the thing one about, with a Grim Reaper, and I'm just like, oh my right? god. <laughs> I know. No, you know the the thing about the game that is most amazing though is that it's the it's the like live action combat that you've always wanted in a action like role playing game because so much of the time you know you're oh swords and shield or you know like basically we've only ever had satisfying fantasy combat in i would say the souls series because for the most part it's it always feels a little bit like the the actual gameplay the feeling of playing the game the you know that that the controls seem to sort of take a back seat when it comes to role playing games and I semi disagree with it just being Dark Souls because Shadow of Mordor is quite good. Even oh, though Shadow of Mordor it, it, it is, is really, really good. Oh, yeah, it's Arkham style combat, but yeah, yeah, that's... it is. It's it's Arkham. It's Arkham slash Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Yeah, you pretty know. much. But it's it's so, good. It's good. But it, it's really no. You're right. It's absolutely really good. But but I think the thing that's nice about this that really sets it apart is that it does a really good job of making you feel like a badass and have a lot of freedom. You know, there's absolutely no locking on to enemies. That's just none. You'd have to. You just have to aim. Uh, if you want to attack people, you can totally just miss them. Uh, and then in addition to that, they have a lot of really cool special abilities and you can have multiple different weapons on you at one time and get special abilities that are specific to those weapons as a, a stamina bar that sort of incorporates all that stuff together, as well as being able to like jump on and climb larger enemies. So you can literally have a moment where, you know, you and a couple of your pawns is basically what they call them and they're your sort of, you know, AI companions. And... The, uh, you know, you could have one pawn literally having like, you know, oh, it's a, it's a mage, but it's not just like lightning bolt, lightning bolt, like it literally summons a lightning whip and then s just whips people with the lightning whip or calls down like rocks, flaming rocks from the sky or something like that. Like it's, it's the most awesome and badass, visually impressive, powerful, you're awesome feeling like mage experience. Cause most of the time it's kind of like pew, pew, pew playing a mage in <laughs> in a in a role playing game unless it's like a turn based game when they can do all the big animations and stuff but then it's sooner or later it's just kind of like yeah 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 let's get to the next part i've seen that before it's just an image it's like a like a like a little cutscene every time you cast a spell but this one really feels amazing they've got lots of really interesting things that you can do but just just the experience of the combat is really incredible and you know say that you've got like a a large a monster and they have them that are just random encounters out in the world as well as kind of planned boss battle type things but, you know, you, d you just run into a giant Cyclops and he's three times your height and you have to, you know, climb up onto a rock and leap onto his back and grab onto him. And there's like a, you know, you slowly but surely run out of like grip strength, sort of like, say, Shadow of Colossus. And you can climb onto his head and then start smashing him in his eye or stabbing him or whatever. And it's just it's just so much fun. I highly recommend the game. I think I've got at the time of this recording at least one video on demand for it. Um, so you can see what it's like, but yeah, it's a lot of fun and I'm going to be playing more of it and hey, I've been playing a couple other things, but really that's the one that's got my attention right now. Hmm. Shaka on demand for your gaming attention. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a, it's a rare moment when a game comes along that has truly remarkable and innovative controls. I, you know, the last time that I played something and felt so, so like felt like so blown away by the feel of the game was probably like the zone of enders games back in the day. Where it was just like, whoa, this feels really different. It's, wow, it's so smooth, and you feel so badass. Like, whoa. So, I always like that. I'm a sucker for good controls. Oh, my. I quite agree. A game, to me, has to play well and feel good 
more than that's the most important thing the performance and the feel of it playing everything else is secondary to me i agree gameplay is king controls are yeah, king. exactly you, i mean I, that's the thing that always cracks me up is people are like well you know i mean i'm really the most important thing to me is the story and it's like yeah the story's there but what do you spend the lion's share of your time doing whilst playing a game playing the game <laughs> <laughs> Like, when you're playing a game, what are you doing? Uh, you're playing the game. Like, the way that you interact with the game, the controls, the actual experience of moving your character, your avatar through the world, interacting with things, all of that is what you spend way the most time doing. And even if it has a great story, but the controls are just awful, miserable, garbage controls, it's going to get in the way of you enjoying the good story. It actually, like, gets in the way of you being able to even experience the game itself if you have bad controls. So... I'm very passionate about that, <clears throat> so I'm gonna I'm gonna I, stop I can, myself now. <laughs> we can tell, Sean. I can, I can, we can tell. For that. Somebody, you should just put patriotic music in the background as you're you're doing your mini rant. Put, <laughs> yeah, put a, put the rant song. <laughs> 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 oh man! Well, why don't we go ahead and get into the news? First up is a story that well, Snowy's been really excited about covering over uh, and over. Yeah, <laughs> over and over. I love it. So let's talk. What uh, do you got for me? Give us your story, Snowy. Uh, my impending suicide? No. Um... Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex Mauer, the fun thing that keeps going on and doesn't the never shut ending up. story. Yep. <laughs> the never-ending story. That'd be nice. There's no fucking dragons involved, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, there is a game. It's called Star Mazer DSP. And uh, the... Person who made the music for that game, a Alex Mauer, decided that she didn't like the way that she was treated by the company in particular regards to royalties because uh, she thought she was taken on and owns as like sort of she is the music person for this and she will own the music and she can do whatever she likes. However, the company behind the game called Imgos Softworks have disputed this and released a contract saying that she does not in fact own the copyright because she is hired as a contractor. Now, to get sort of her way with all of this, Alex Mauer decided that she was going to, uh, to file loads of YouTube DMCA claims against many, many people who played the game on their channels. She then, once the claim was sort of disputed, and whatever, or not once the payment was disputed, she was just emailing people saying, I've claimed this video. If you want me to not claim it, then attack the developer instead. Or words to that effect, anyway. I'm paraphrasing. So I mean, then, she was basically trying to you like hold people's channels and videos ransom and try and yes. get them to act on her behalf for the company to get something that was not that is like outside of the bounds of her contract. It's ridiculous. Correct. It's ex yes. It's extortion. It's blackmail. That's one hundred percent. Exactly. So from that, she got a lot of attention from it. Lots of people started attacking her. She's got increasingly defensive and sort of closed in. And then her DMCA stuff continued. She kept doing it. And we thought it was resolved when a lawsuit was actually filed against her by the developers of Star Mazer, who are seeking only legal cover, like the cost of the legal cover, and just to sort of clear everything up that's all that they're uh wanting so that got filed and then it was reported that she was apparently receiving help so sort of mental help and whatever and we thought that was the end of the story well because it felt uh, like she wasn't making choices that like a person in their right mind would be making no they did feel like someone who is it still does feel like someone who's a little bit mentally unstable for sure for sure Wh wait so they tossed her in the loony bin uh, actually, yes, she was taken in. Really? It's, it's one of those That's things that a family, a family member can do it, can put some, get some sectioned against their will. Oh, and wow. that's, that's what happened to her. And she was released after three days. And we, th you know, we thought it was the end of it by now. We sort of moved on. And then she comes back with a vengeance, starts filing DMCA claims again. And says that she's now no longer talking to her family because she thinks they're sort of against her. So she doesn't talk to them anymore. 
Uh, the conspiracy and, expands. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's that problem. kept happening. And then she started attacking the developers, well, the videos of another game called River City Rampage. Uh, just, I think she was involved with the music on that too. And I think she was just sort of going a bit insane over it. And it's, it's just it's kept going on. She's kept filing these DMCA claims and she's kept attacking people. She threatened to kill one particular YouTuber by the name of Sid Alpha, who called the police on her. Um, That's incredible. And the police said, oh, she's in a different state. There's no need to worry. <laughs> like, this person, yeah, because that's how yes. that works. This person's clearly yeah, mentally unstable, but it's fine. It's fine. She's not anywhere near you. You'll be fine. That was pretty much what they said. It was really ugh, throwing it away. And then, so this, so this all kept going, and she kept filing claims and everything. And today, as we are recording, the 13th of July, a temporary restraining order has been granted against her. This means that if I bring up the actual. Uh, contract which I have in here. A temporary restraining order is ordered and has actually been sort of approved that the defendant shall not issue further copyright claims, takedown notices, or DMCA takedown notices for any work relating to Star Mazer. Defendant shall take necessary steps to rescind the takedown notices currently pending. Defendant shall refrain from, make, refrain from making threats of harm and physical violence against the plaintiff or their lawyers, which she has done. Uh, plaintiff shall post which is plaintiff, which is the owner of um, Star Mazer DSP, shall post a bond for $100 to get it actually put through. And that's basically the end of that. That was approved today. Oh, God. So, so Hopefully now, it'll be the end of all this. Uh, don't say that. <laughs> Kiss <laughs> I'm going to jinx it. No. I'm going to jinx yeah. it. <laughs> she now, because it's, it's temporary, so it will expire, but she oh, now, God. at least for now, cannot issue any further copyright takedowns and has to uh, rescind other false ones. However, this doesn't stop her from issuing any more that are related to the other game, River City Rampage. So oh, she could still do that to her heart's content because this lawsuit is between her and the developer of Star Mazer, not anyone else. But I suspect there will be a few of people waiting to sue her by the time this particular lawsuit is done. I can only imagine that this is the beginning of the end of her career. She's basically never, oh, yeah. like, nobody's ever going to want to work with her again. And she's had a, a career for some time now creating, you know, music for games that you would recognize. And Yeah, exactly. And she's just shot herself completely in the foot and no one's going to want to hire her again. Exactly. Even if she managed to get exactly what she wants in this situation, she has demonstrated that she's a crazy person and <laughs> that... <laughs> that, you know, she's essentially blacklisted herself. I can't imagine yeah. any self-respecting developer or publisher would be like, oh, Alex Maurer, yeah, yeah, let's hire her on. She's great. She's reliable. She's never going to cause us problems. It's like, yeah. nope. She's absolutely <laughs> managed to just put her something, like, she's put baby in the corner. You know, she's just, no one's ever going to want to dance with her again. <laughs> no, exactly. There was, of course, the sort of, she's, she's trying to play the victim card a lot during all of this. And oh, of course. Because she's a transgender person, a lot of transphobic people have been attacking her based on that, and she's been using that as sort of like to garner sympathy from people. And she's like, "I am the victim here," when she's really not the victim. But at the same time, that kind of talk, like attacking someone for being transgender, is it, yep. universally it's, despicable. It's reprehensible. It's 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 you know yes. th that's that's the thing of it is that anytime somebody does some stupid bullshit and people call them out on it and it's all public, then the internet, which is a place where everybody exists, the people that are and aren't bigoted are all there. The bigoted mm -hmm. people are going to be like, yeah, you suck because of whatever it is that you can't control, and so I'm going to be mean and bigoted. It's just like, that's <laughs> not what this is about. You're just a crazy person trying to get money when you shouldn't. And yeah. ah, like it's got nothing to do nah. with anything personal at all. This is 100% yeah. professional. That's the thing, they're bringing all of this stuff into it, and that's just sort of clouding the issue. And totally. Or, yeah. But then, of course, bec the YouTuber that I'm talking about, Sid Alpha, uh, she is, well, she's now trying to sue him because uh, he used her, what she refers to as dead name, which is her her name before her transition. Her pre-transition, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, which is public record. It's a matter of sure. public record. So there's no legal grounds for any of this suit. 
But uh, yeah, he put like a tiny quarter of her birth certificate that just had the name, didn't have anything else, like anything that could have been there was blurred out in the video, one of his videos, and she is trying to sue him over that, which is a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, it probably yeah, won't work good out. Good luck with yeah, that. Yeah, because it is all public record. So you can't copyright, you can't sue someone for showing something that is public record. That's not how it works. This whole thing is like watching a slow motion car wreck. It's just... <laughs> oh, yeah. So so let's go down the list here. Oh, God. Uh, she's crazy as hell. Yeah. Check. Uh, she's gotten... She successfully gotten herself a restraining order against her. Check. And um, if I recall correctly, hadn't she also gotten death threats from people that are just sick of her crap? Uh, yes, yeah, she has been receiving death threats, but... Uh, yeah. And then that turned around and issued some herself! Yes! Awesome. She really... <laughs> Like that was one of her ways to garner sympathy, and she fucking ruined it. Well done. So, so it's check, check, and check. I yeah. think our prognosis is uh, Alex Maurer. You are crazy as hell, and yep. you're probably going to lose. And no one will want to work with you again. Sorry. Uh, yep. but, but let's be careful, guys. She might try to sue us next. Probably. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Alex Maurer, if you happen to be listening, uh, why? What is why? Just stop, please. I want you to be happy and have a happy life and be, like, lovely and whatever. You're not helping yourself, okay? Please, just stop and live your life. There we go. If only so that you can just not have to report on it anymore. <laughs> exactly. Please, help me! Make it stop! <laughs> no, 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 no. In a corner. Let's, let's, let's keep it going. That way Count has more and more material, and he oh, just God. never stops. However, I don't stop. have to do a news video until Wednesday, so I can ignore Damn it until it. then. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> well, next up in the news, Valve has issued its biggest ban hammer in history following the Steam Summer Sale. Evidently, we're talking ugh, it's so many, you guys. Over 40,000 Steam accounts have been banned. <laughs> and this was on a single day, July 6th. So evidently, the, the, the total number is 40,444. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's <laughs> oddly. Uh, if only it was that. If only it was 44. Four thousand. Oh, dude, that would have been amazing. <laughs> oh, that'd be great. Uh, conspiracy, Illuminati discovered and confirmed. No, but, <laughs> Half-Life Four confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, look at look at the graph, the peak on that day. It looks like a triangle. Illuminati confirmed. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, the, the the thing that's really nuts about this is that the previous like previous record for single day bans was less than half of that. The previous record was 15,227 uh, from October 2016, and it's just insane. And the speculation is really fascinating about this, because the reason why people are speculating that this happened, and it, it specifically at this time on that day, was that this was right around when the, um, then the, when the summer sale was, I think, ending. And, yes, it um, just ended. Right, exactly. And so basically what they think was happening is that people that were wanting to test or mess with or try out a bunch of different cheat type stuff would make a new account and then just to be able to do the cheating on an account that if it got banned, it wouldn't affect them. Right. And so they would make a new account and then they would purchase these games that they wanted to cheat in at extremely low prices during the summer sale and then just cheat their brains out. And Valve was wise to that and lo locked them down. I think the final piece of, of, of actual details here, numbers-wise, that's incredible is that according to the tracking site VACBAN, and this is from a Eurogamer article, according to the, tracker, uh, the tracking site VACBAN, $7,388 worth of goods, like cosmetic items and such, were forfeit from this purge of cheaters. That is crazy. <laughs> that is nuts. Jesus. It's incredible. It's it's so weird how like weird stuff like this comes along that, you know, something that is seemingly an innocuous thing that is basically generally positive, unless you're the kind of person who has no self-control. <clears throat> I don't know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> um, that the Steam sale comes along and it's basically all thumbs up. Everybody's like, yay, Steam sale, woo! And then like still shitty human beings are like, you know what? I can fuck this up. <laughs> 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 it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like tr trolls, trolls, it's, I mean, trolls just, well, trolls are going to troll. That's oh, just yeah. it. They're going to find, they're going to find a way. <laughs> but the, I think there's the pure, the raw numbers in this article are fucking staggering. It's just insane. Yeah, it really is. That's, that's so much. I mean, when you look at it, it's only sort of a few cents per account. Right. But at the same time, 
that's a lot. And it's so many accounts. But uh, uh, one of my theories of it is, is it to do with the people who also just buy a load of games cheap. Like they're, they're, they're the sort of card scalpers, the Steam card system, all that kind oh, of rubbish. Yeah. Do sure. they, are they doing that? Like they're just getting these games that are really, really cheap, getting loads of cards, selling off cards, for, and then they're making like a tiny bit of profit, but they're doing it on a load of game. Is that the case? No idea. Hmm. But there's, there's a lot of sort of theories as to why this sort of thing is happening. But at the same time, I don't think it's affected a lot of people in why as much of a way as they wanted to. Because again, they're probably just accounts that have just been set up. They're little bot oh, totally. accounts. So they're, they're just very likely new accounts. I mean, I'm sure Steam yeah, exactly. has all the details about how many, like how long, how old the account is and how many games it has on it and stuff. But, you know, the article here on Eurogamer is suggesting that, is speculating that it's, it's people that just bought the games to try and cheat in them. And, and I, I think. I think the the big takeaway from this article for me, and if I were to be looking looking forward to or finding a silver lining here, is that this demonstrates that Valve is deadly serious about protecting its community from cheaters. That it is yeah. literally willing to ban forty thousand, almost forty point five thousand freaking accounts on his in a single day, you know, and and that it was swift too. It wasn't just like oh, over the course of the next two months or three months or whatever. Accounts that were made in and around the Steam sale have been killed, like that would be much less interesting. What's exciting about this is the large numbers, of course, because it's just like, holy shit. But in addition to that, I think what what particularly for me feels like the good part of all of this is that they banned and they banned hard and they banned fast. And maybe this will be something that will help discourage people from doing that because people that cheat suck they're just they're just they're just ruining the experience for everybody else and they should just they should get the banniest of ban hammers smashed into their skulls cuz that is garbage <laughs> my so. my shock i think you feel a little strongly about this i don't know it's just there's just something in the air that tells me you're you're pretty serious about this <laughs> but um it's 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 weird i'm not Maybe. Exactly entirely <laughs> sure how the vax system works is it just per account or is it IP bans? Because if it were an IP ban, it's not just one account that gets banned, if you know what I mean. It's all the accounts that it pertains to that particular IP, which would be a serious blow to cheaters if that were to happen. I, I think that there are account bans. I think there are account yeah. bans. Uh, I think that IP bans are a little bit more of like a particular game server site type situation. So like you can ban an IP, I believe. And there are tools to like ban an IP if uh, you're running a Minecraft server or something like that. Uh, I think you can also ban specific accounts as well. But I, I, I feel like, and again, don't quote me on this, but, but I, I believe that IP bans are a little bit more the realm of like a specific game or game server in comparison to Steam uh, banning accounts. Like they're not probably going to ban an entire IP because maybe there's a house with several people. Like, you know, I live with several friends. And mm, if one that. of them was a dirty, cheating bastard and got his account banned, rightfully so, <laughs> I wouldn't want... That would be totally bullshit for me to get banned. I don't think that, that Valve would open themselves up to that. No, mm. they would. Fair point. Fair point. Very also, fair I've point. worked but... it out, and 40,000 counts is actually 0.00053% of Steam users. Yeah. <laughs> not, not a whole lot uh, altogether, <laughs> but it's still, it's still a big wise, chunk. No, but yeah. yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> just just thought oh, I'd throw wow. that in there just thought I'd do some maths while you two were talking <laughs> well speaking of uh, outrageous shit what's next on the news Vox well it seems that uh, ARK Survival Evolved has hiked their prices and according to the Daisy creator Dean Hall it's um, and I quote fucking outrageous <laughs> so uh, last week as uh, Ark Survival Evolved doubled its price. It's insane. Studio Wildcard is now asking for $60 for their incomplete game. And to be honest, I haven't played Ark myself, or from what I've seen on several videos, the game is far from being able to ask for such an such a steep price. It's uh, all right. You know, it's that's the thing. It's like it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dean Hall on Twitter uh, stated that, uh, just so we're clear, in my opinion, the price increase for ARK is fucking outrageous. And then two minutes later, he posted again, stating ARK 
The game is nowhere near ready for that kind of price. It's greed. Pure and simple, it represents a huge disconnect with the community. A lot of the fans are not happy with this, man. I gotta tell you. It's just, you know, when, when you're charging that much for an early access game? I don't know, man. Yeah, it's, it's I feel like that's something move. they should have waited until actual launch, because it's going to be yep. launch on PC, PS4, and Xbox One on apparently August the 8th. And if, when it's on PS4 and Xbox One, it will be a $60 title. That, that's that's like how much they're going to charge they're gonna for it. A month of that. Like, really, guys? Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, why, why would you do this so much ahead of time? Just wait till it was yeah, out already. That's what I'm thinking. I was just like, why not have just waited? Fair enough. Like, here's, you've bought this game in early access, so you get it a bit cheaper. But no, they didn't do that. They have just upped it while it's still in early access because they can. I can under I'd understand greed. it if they'd up if they'd up the price after it had launched. That makes sense to a point. Yes. I mean, I still wouldn't be a fan of it, but it makes more sense. It's a hundred percent a common practice to have a lower price for early access to make it a more compelling offer to try and draw people in to test essentially the game to be to pay to test the game for them essentially and be part right. of the development process. It's a brilliant way to develop games pioneered by early games like you know Minecraft was one of the first ones to really popularize that. Uh, Project Zomboid comes to mind. There's there's tons of games though, and I'm sure there's games that did it before that. But the I the, the idea of early access in concept is really great, but it feels like it's become this just large, you know, cumbersome system that people just spend too much time in early access. And then people like Ark. I mean, we talked about early access, you know, amongst ourselves a while back, I think, on one of the alpha podcasts. And yeah, I think I was on that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, and this exact game came up as an example of what is absolutely unacceptable as far as how they run their early access program. And it wasn't even about this, because this is brand new news. It was about them releasing fucking DLC that is pay DLC before the damn game was even out. It's like, finish the game, you assholes. And so it's like, this is not the first time that the ARC people have done something that is clearly not gamer first. It is clearly not consumer conscious. It is absolutely impatient. It's greedy it's just garbage like this is not the first time that they've done shitty stuff in regards to asking for more money from a community that has supported them so much from early on and put up with bugs and in an incomplete game and given them feedback i mean early access like i said before is essentially you getting people to pay you to test your game for you normally you pay them now, I know it's not anything like hiring a real game tester who's a professional and gives you like full on reports and shit. But like the fact that you can have a bunch of quality assurance people give you money to help you support your project and then submit bug reports and stuff like that on all the various and sundry different, you know, device fragmentation we have on the computers and stuff like like what's a wonderful resource to make your game better and and more polished and root out all kinds of weird bugs and stuff to, to like shit on them is so insane. It's disgusting. And 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 oh. what's really scary is later here in this article, Gary Newman, who is known the for musician. his <laughs> the creator of Gmod, no, yeah, he's the creator, creator of Gmod. You know, um, he he replied to Dean's post where he was saying, you know, it represents a huge disconnect with the community, and he says they're good at making money. DLC consoles price hikes still uh, still in early access doesn't seem to really hurt them. Maybe we could learn something, and and that right there is fucking horrifying. Might the idea I that, say something there? Yes, A please. lot of people have taken that as serious. I am under the impression that he's being sarcastic. Because that to me, that's, that's something I'd say. That is incredibly sarcastic to me. I might be wrong, he might be being serious, in which case that's just fucking stupid. But I think he's being sarcastic. No, I, I, I sincerely doubt he's being serious. That that screams sarcasm. I mean, you mean yeah? You, you're you're a, a massive hypocrite a, as well. <laughs> exactly. You're you know, the creator I just, of a really popular game, and it's just 
Would you just say that? Uh, no, it's it's sarcasm. <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't know Gary Newman. I don't follow him. I'm not aware of the way he communicates. But just looking at this text right here, it doesn't look sarcastic to me. There's no exclamation point. There's no winking. There's no there's no you know use of emojis or anything to to drive home the the point. It's I mean, it, it, there's just just words and periods and basic punctuation. There's not anything in there that even hints at that. And so maybe he you know has a deadpan sense of humor and does that all the time. Fine, but it doesn't seem like it. And when you make comments like this, you 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 have to sort of kind of take into consideration that as you're stepping into the larger stage where people like myself are going to probably hear what you said and they're not going to know who you are, you have to be a little more careful about what you write there. To me, that lands as, hey, maybe we can learn something from them because they're clearly yeah. doing good, even though they're shitting all over their c customers. And it's kind of like, oh, fuck, that's not awesome. But maybe, mm. maybe I hope I'm wrong, really. I'll go back to what I said previously in the in the Alpha podcast about how I feel about early access. In essence, it's a good idea, but lately it's just become more of a fad than an actual thing. Eh, it's yeah, it's a becoming shit. abusive. <laughs> Say what? It's just a pile of shit. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's a good idea with good intentions that's gone terribly. Agreed. Agreed. Well, the final piece of news is something that Snowy is super excited about, so why don't you take it away, my friend? Ugh. Yes, Pokemon! I love Pokemon! Give me more Pokemon! No, it's not that. I'm not that bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm, I am a big fan of the Pokemon franchise. I own every main series game and most of the side ones. However, I am not so bad that I can't recognize the fact that the series has quite a few flaws. Anyway, with that aside, I am really excited by the special deluxe edition of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon that is coming out. Well, specifically the European one, because that's the one I'd be getting that's coming yeah. out when the game releases on November 17th. So basically, this is something they've not done before. You can actually get both games in one package. They've not done that before as far as I'm aware. It's certainly not like this. Uh, both of the, If you buy this particular version, both games come in one steel case, which looks oh, gorgeous. It's, it's yeah, gives it's really me cool happy, it gives me happy feelings downstairs. And <laughs> oh, hey there. Thank you all so much for watching. <laughs> yeah. Bye. I'll never be back. <laughs> uh, it also comes with, uh, yeah, both the games and two download codes for 50 potions each, which I don't give a fuck about. Because who cares about that, really? What I'd rather have is come with figures like the, like the previous sets of two. The limited editions have both come with uh, figures of each uh, mascot Pokemon, mm -hmm. and I have all four of them, and they are lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'd rather they do that. But at the same time, I'm glad they've done this because of this, because the American version at least is being sold for ninety dollars, which translates to about seventy five pounds, and that is much cheaper than buying both the games at once. Because both the games at once, actually, that's not much. Cheaper about five pounds cheaper or ten dollars cheaper ish sure but yeah the, the games are about sixty dollars no they're usually 50 can't handheld fifty dollars 40 pounds each and buy them both you end up paying more and the deluxe editions usually because there are deluxe editions for just each one which have different steel cases to right. the one that's together so if you're a massive diehard collector you need to own everything <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, uh, now it means that you've got to buy, buy two, two copies of, each of the game, game each. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so the deluxe editions are usually about £45, if I remember rightly. So you're saving roughly somewhere between 5 and £15 a time oh, mm -hmm. to get both of the games in this lovely looking steel case. And uh, that's pretty much all it is. It's very, um, very basic stripped down news, but I just wanted to bring it up because it makes me really happy. <laughs> Uh, you said this is the first time that they've actually done two in one like uh, of this. Any kind. I think they have d the, the last one. I think it was Sun and Moon. They did actually sell a double pack, but mm. it was just the two games in their normal boxes. There was nothing particularly special about it. I don't. I hope uh, that this is a tradition that they continue to keep up because that is not an yeah. uncommon practice for serious, you know, fans. And I mean, who the hell is going to buy the special edition? Serious fans. I mean, yeah, exactly. I think there's, that's always been an issue with me that you. You've never, until maybe last generation, maybe now, been able to buy both of them together. Because a lot of people, like me, 
want to actually have both of them. I had to wait about a month or two between getting, I got Moon first and then I got Sun later, later on down the line. And I ended up buying the figure off eBay because I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that person. But yeah, to be able to actually buy both of them together is thank you. Finally worked it out that some people actually do this because yeah, that's, that's always been a bit of a bugbear for me. It's good. It's nice. It's nice. It's good that they're doing that and listening to the consumers and giving, giving the people what they want because <laughs> uh, we like getting what we want. So that's, that's, that's good. That's good. <laughs> we get oh, what we want, whether I, they like I, it or not. I've got venom in my blood. For Do this you not right like now. Pokemon? Oh, okay. I think you so, need to shaka. leave if you don't. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All, all I'll say is they shouldn't have made another one not not ultra sun not ultra moon they could have made an entirely new pokemon game but instead they just continued the same lackluster story so that's the i that's half the small... agree half disagree i'm not entirely I'll, I'll, disagree that's that's the small amount of venom that i'll spew for this if you okay. want if you want more information on his opinion on this just watch the last episode or listen to the last episode the the alpha <laughs> podcast that we just posted it is the one where you go on a long tirade about how ridiculous it is that they basically just <laughs> rebranded them and didn't do anything different and they're releasing them again on the same system it's just like you know, that was that was in the middle of the debacle of is it going to be on the switch or not? <laughs> nope. It's just the exact same game with a couple tiny changes re-released on the same fucking system. And you, you lost your shit. <laughs> I, I, will say, that's, that's I will say, the time. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, steelbook yeah. looks good. The stuff looks good. It's just they should have changed the game. Anyway, okay. moving on. Moving on. <laughs> We're going to take a quick musical break. When we return, we'll get into the topic of our show, making your own fun. You're listening to Run Right, Don't Die, official podcast of the Gamecast Network. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Run Why Don't Die, the official podcast of the Gamecast Network. Now, without any further ado, let's get right into the topic of the show, making your own fun. And this is something that we came up with when we were brainstorming topic ideas. And uh, I remembered back to a couple of funny instances where, you know, you play enough video games and you're a video game enthusiast for long enough. Sooner or later, you're going to run into different situations where you're like, holy shit, that's actually really a silly, fun thing that you can do in this game. And it's it's not even really something the game is meant to do or it's some like weird kooky little aspect of it or something and it tends to orbit for me anyway around glitches or around you know trolling or online play or something like that and you could do a bunch of really funny silly things and so i thought it'd be fun for us to go around and share some of our favorite experiences examples or maybe even something that you didn't necessarily do but something you heard of but some of the some of your favorite ways to make your own fun in a video game you know, above and beyond the fun just inherent in playing the game. So, uh, anybody have anything fun that comes to mind? Well, this topic brought straight brought, brought to my mind straight away the topic of modding. Uh, oh, because, totally. Totally. Yeah, modding is basically just this topic in a nutshell. I think m m most of my favorite modding experiences until recently, for one reason that will be very obvious, was with Grand Theft Auto V. Yeah. So, uh, why might that have changed? I don't know. <clears throat> Gee whiz, maybe. <laughs> Goodness me, I don't know why. Uh, yeah, modding in Grand Theft Auto V is amazing. There's a lot of good mods. I remember spending many hours just sort of running around with a car cannon mod, which means you fire your gun and loads of cars come out and you just create havoc and it's what? all fun. Cars come out of your gun? Yes. Yeah. Have you not awesome. heard of this mod? It's amazing. It's the best mod. You just like... I think the the fire rate goes up with various guns and it's just sort of it'll fire <laughs> any vehicle in the game, including like massive huge things. <laughs> and it awesome. creates havoc. It's amazing. That sounds horrible. <laughs> no, it's not, it's amazing. 
Is it just me or does like the Saint Row series basically just like sit back and let the the mods roll in for the most recent GTA and be like, okay, we're just going to add all that to the game now? <laughs> that that yeah, definitely sounds like something right? the guys from Saint Row will do. I mean, it's, yeah. it's GTA except goofier, way goofier. <laughs> That's basically what it's always been since Saints Row Two. It's been goofy GTA, and it's absolutely and, until four. In my mind, it kind of worked for it. So oh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> other things. There is another GTA, very specific GTA thing that I remember. And it stands out to me as a memory. Um, so, you know, in GTA, there's a big city and the right. city goes sort of up on a gradient up to the top. But pretty much anyway, uh, mm -hmm. I was going up the hill just to Are we talking about the... five right now. Yes, we're on GTA five. Sorry. OK, there was uh, there was I was going up a hill towards the very top of the city and I was going quite quickly because you do. OK, ramped off. I hit a van on the side. The van then toppled onto its side and I landed the car perfectly on it. Like literally, <laughs> the van was on its side and the car was just sitting on the side perfectly straight up. And I was just like, holy shit, I will never do that again. Just like stacking cars. That's amazing. It was, it was so funny. I was just like, oh my God, this is the best thing. But uh, as much as I also, again, with GTA 5, as much as I hate the GTA Online, creating your own missions and doing your own thing with that is amazing. There is, there oh, is a YouTuber, yeah, there's a YouTuber I watch called uh, Nerd Cubed. Some people may have heard of him. Oh, so and good. He did, he did a series, oh, it's, it's ended now, but he used to do a series with uh, one of the Yogscast guys, and they used to play a lot of GTA on that, and he made loads of challenges. And they were all deathmatch challenges because that's how you have to set them up. But he just did stupid things. And like there was one, he set up a huge ramp on the top of one building and he had to ramp off that and then get to the next building. Like that was his aim in the challenge. Nice. And that was fucking great to watch. Uh, what else do we have? There's Just Cause 3. Just do anything in Just Cause 3 because you can do things like strapping explosives to cows. And because of the way you can upgrade your things, you can have the explosives because you've got infinite C4. You can have Propel this C4. Them. Yes, you can. <laughs> it just goes poof and they just fly away. It's the best thing. Oh, that was one of mine. You upgrade that enough and you, do, you can and basically put like what up to four of them, like super powerful, basically like rockets on anything. Yeah. And you can like <laughs> slap rockets on cows, cars, people, and then just whoosh, off they go. <laughs> it's so good. It's, it's the best. best. Thing. I might have spent as much time doing that exclusively that one thing <laughs> as I spent doing anything else in the game. Yeah. As soon as I discovered that, I was like, well, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next hour of <laughs> yeah. maybe 10 hours. I just flew around like a crazy bat person and then would drop down and be like, what your ass needs is rockets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, God, it's so good. I do oh have another God. one before we... Let's hear it. If, if we go on. There's a game called Turbo Dismount. It's an indie game. Oh, okay. God. And basically, like you're, you go, you don't directly control the game. Mostly, that you can do steering if you want, but you pick your car, pick your crash test dummy, and put it all together. There's a big choice, and then you pick your level, and you can customize the level. And your your goal is to get the best score on that level. Uh, I did a video where I ended up playing bowling with. I, just, I went through all the cars and most of the characters. And I just ended up playing bowling with them. <laughs> just trying to like, I set up a wall on, on the, uh, like, so the cars would knock into it and the character would fly off. And then there were bowling pins at the end. And I was just like, how many pins can I get down with these people? <laughs> I think that, that, that there's, there's one for a big fat man. And I think that guy won. <laughs> Steer right. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was a good video that almost nobody watched. <laughs> Aww. It's fine. Sometimes nobody the best watches videos my videos. You make is just like, why does nobody watch that? That's yeah, amazing. It's fine. Yeah. Nobody watches my videos as it is. <laughs> it's so good. Depression. You know, all of the rocket talk from Just Cause reminds me of one of my favorite make your own fun moments. In Grand Theft Auto 4, if you had full health and a a full armor on, so I guess it was basically like a like a vest, like an armored vest. Hmm. It basically the armored vest would act as sort of like the first thing that would get eaten into, and then your health. 
And so what you could do was, and of course at this point I was using cheats and stuff, and so what you could do is you could, and I guess, I wonder if even if there was a, a god mode cheat, I probably should have just been doing that. Anyway, I would I would give myself full health, put on, the, ja uh, put on the, the flak jacket, and then what you could do is if you had a rocket, you could aim at the ground at your feet and then like launch yourself like a rag doll up onto stuff. And so, so what I would, I would wander around the city and be like, I wonder if I can get on that building. And then I'd put in the cheat code to be like a full health, full armor, and then just aim at the ground, just go boom. And then when you get hit by an explosion, immediately you go into ragdoll physics and you just get flopped around in the air, like some kind of ridiculous raggedy, raggedy Andy flying through the air and landing on shit. And what I would do is I got really good at like walking up to something being like, all right, okay, I think I need to be at this angle and this close. And then I would like take a couple couple steps here, a couple steps there, turn around, aim at the ground, boom, and shoot, and then flip up onto something. <laughs> like shit you had no business being on in that game at all, because that's not a climbing things game at all. You can like climb over like little shit. It's not, there's, there's no Assassin's Creed in its blood at all. But what was fun is that if you could figure it out to get up onto a, a roof somewhere, and some of the places were really particularly awesome. Like there was one I remember where it's sort of in the, th in the city where there's more skyscrapery stuff going on. And there's this like little, I don't remember exactly what the building was, but it was maybe maybe like a convenience store or a fast food restaurant or something like that. But essentially there was skyscrapers all around and then a small, shorter building in between them. So if you imagine like a skyscraper on its left, right and behind it, so you basically were protected except for the front. And then in fact, the front even had like a little sign that was above the the baseline of the roof so that you had sort of like cover you could hide behind. And so if you flipped yourself up there, then you could essentially get to full like five stars or how, I think it's five stars is the max, right? And yeah. you get, get to full five star wanted level and then you could you could stay up there for basically indefinitely. <laughs> because no one could get to you. You had cover and the and like the stuff that really kills you when you're doing that kind of shit is the stuff in the sky. Right. And so you have cover from three different sides and they're trying to shoot at you and you can just live up there hanging out. But the, the really ridiculous make your own fun part was just like trying to, walking around being like, I wonder if I can get on that building. I wonder if I can get onto that roof and just rocket blowing myself up there over and over again. <laughs> 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 and then real quick, my other favorite one is really more of a troll type situation. And um, what we, my, my buddy, uh, my buddy Justin and I, what we did was we got... Uh, and this is a game that I don't think people think of for trolling, but we were playing Little Big Planet, <laughs> which, uh, yeah. which is like a sweet little like la 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 happy times. You know, it's like it's like you know Sony's real hard swing at trying to make like a Mario like experience, and. You know, sure enough, all the, you know, happy little sack boys having a good time. And we played an online level and we would just sit in levels that had environmental hazards like fire, acid, whatever. And then we'd wait for people to drop in and you could have up to four people, I think, playing at once. And we would just kick back and hang out and talk on the couch. And then as soon as somebody dropped into our game, our entire purpose was to try and drag them because you could grab stuff in that game, right? Try and grab a hold of their character and drag them off of the edge into the fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> and what we would do is we would chain up where he would grab me, I would grab them, I would leap off of the edge and then uh, let go of them and then he would hold me and drag me back up. <laughs> and so we would we would basically dump people into environmental hazards and the game was, the meta game within a game, was to try and get them to rage quit. <laughs> Like, the entire point was to basically just throw them off the edge over and over again until they got so mad that they left our session. <laughs> so, and that's so, how you yeah. know that Shaka is evil. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. you know, I get evil when I'm around him because he's the kind of guy where if you're not cheating, you're not trying. He is like troll man number one. He basically lives underneath a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Anything yeah. come to mind for you, though, Vox? Well... I've got two. They're not particularly funny as they are kind of epic. And I All just, right. I, I live it. for these things. So, okay. The first one is from um, Need for Speed Most Wanted, Black Edition. That I feels like that the kind of game, game you can death. make your own fun in. <laughs> it, it, I love that game to death. And particularly, I would abuse the open world mechanic. Just get into these insane chases just to see how long I could last on, like, max level heat. So we've got helicopters, we've got freaking Corvettes just chasing And heat is like wanted level in GTA, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. okay. 
And so I'm at max heat level. I'm in my McLaren just digging around the entirety of Rosewood and wherever I can go that there's a highway. I've got uh, SUVs, like armored SUVs, charging past me, trying to slam into me. My favorite thing to do is to dodge out of the way last minute and have them smash into their own cops. Just watch Corvettes flying all over the place every single time. It never nice. failed. And I would often uh, hide out in the golf section as well, hide in the sand pits. And there's this weird bug with the AI where they can't gauge their speed. So every time they would come chasing after me and I would just suddenly stop in the sand pits, they'd fly right over me, smash into the next sand pit and just flip. And <laughs> they're, they're just done. And so I yes. would get these massive bounties for literally nothing. It would be That's the cops awesome. destroying their own vehicle, but they'd blame me for it. That's awesome. My second, <laughs> my second favorite one is the more epic one. So there's this also another weird glitch in the first Assassin's Creed. There's this Templar stronghold that you can go to. Now note, since this is the first Assassin's Creed, there is no countering mechanic. There is only defending and dodging and, you know, using your sword and your hidden blade. And there was this weird bug where an infinite amount of Templars would just spawn from behind this tent. So I would get it started. <laughs> By the time I was done, there would be like two, three, four hundred Templar bodies just everywhere dead <laughs> from me fighting all these guys off and this would often take like an hour or two of just constant fighting just <laughs> constant on the dot action scene and i so love you're basically trying to just crash your game minute. with bodies <laughs> yes and, and and because of my rig is you know a somewhat decent rig it would take a while before any lag would actually start occurring well, so it awesome. was just this constant it was just this constant fight scene i loved it to death just templars all of them all the Templars. Oh, Lord. But anyway. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I've got one last oh. one. I have to share <laughs> oh, this. this is, okay, just real quick. This last one is fucking amazing. So, Red Dead Redemption, what I would do is I would go off into the woods, and, and often we would do this with friends, too. It was a little easier with friends, but what I would do is I would go off into the woods and try and find a bear, and the, the, the purpose was you gotta punch the bear in the butt, Barehanded, just punch him what? right <laughs> in the butt, handed. and then somehow escape. <laughs> like oh it, you were never going to kill it by punching it, but if you could manage to get up to a bear and punch him right in the bunghole, and then be like, ah, and just fuck off and run away, <laughs> if you could manage to escape the bear after punching him in the butt, that was considered a victory. And basically, what we did is we passed the controller around the living room. Actually, in fact, at that time we had two playstations and two TVs right next to each other, so we could do local game co-op um it was like this was at a time where i was living with like five just a bunch of gamer buddy friends and we just our our living room was ridiculous game central and so we sat down and we we you know jumped into the same session together posseed up and then went off into the hills and essentially one person would act as sort of like the 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 camera and watch the scene and the other person would go up find a bear go boom right in the butt and then run <laughs> and the other person would follow them and try and watch and see what happens <laughs> and if they managed to escape, then it was the other person's turn. It was the fucking best. <laughs> Shaka, that sounds like an excellent drinking game. <laughs> oh my god, yes! Yes, it get worse every time because they're just too drunk. <laughs> yes. Every time you lose, you take a shot. Oh god damn, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, we should do that for a community night. <laughs> oh my god. Well, uh, why don't we go ahead and count that as my final thought as we shift into the end game, where we go around way in one last time, make your final point, or respond to something you didn't get a chance to earlier. So that was that was definitely my final thought. Any uh, you guys have any uh, anything else you want to add there before we wrap up tonight? Uh, oh, please. The whole game of Besiege is just a massive fuck around, and it's great. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. That I've game's so much fun. It, oh, it's so great because there's a sandbox. There's a, uh, there's now two sandbox levels. And you can just go forever with that. Have you seen some of the stuff that's been made on it, modded in? Like oh, someone totally. has it's someone crazy. has made a working version of the Helicarrier from the Avengers. <laughs> yes, that's it awesome. works, that's and it drops nuts. bombs, and it's fucking amazing. Uh, yes, someone's awesome. someone's made a Megatron. Apparently, I'm just looking at the latest mods. Yes. Uh, yeah, someone's made a load of Transformers. Apparently, a jet. A jet? <laughs> Fuck! I look at somebody's. Like, I can vacation. barely make a cannon or anything. That's incredible. Ah, oh, this is <laughs> yeah. Some of this stuff is just amazing, and there's a working tank as well. And oh, it's 
It's beautiful. I remember trying it's to make fantastic. a walker in it once, like just like a human type thing that walks. And it's basically impossible, but oh my god, is it funny? <laughs> <laughs> just to see the thing try to move and just falling over almost instantly is just insane. It's really funny. And yes, awesome. that, I'm going to recommend people go and buy Besiege. It's in early access, but it's good and it's still getting updated mostly. And it's pretty inexpensive too. Yes, I feel like five quid or stupid. Yeah, it's, it's something tiny. Yeah, it is £5.59, which is about $8. There you go. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, seven ninety nine in the States. Oh, yes, I got it right. <laughs> right on. Fox, anything, any final thoughts, man, before we wrap up? Only one. Ultra Sun. Ultra <laughs> Moon. That shouldn't have been a thing. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> we don't know what they've changed or what they won't change yet. I think you're just still salty that they didn't make a, 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 a Switch version. I think that's, that's what's really Maybe. Happening. But then Pokemon <laughs> Tournament is getting a Switch version, and that looks amazing. Oh, yeah, no, no, that looks great. I'm looking I forward just... to that. I'm still waiting for an actual Pokemon game on the Switch. That's what I'm waiting for. Maybe next but, generation. Uh, Maybe Gen 8 uh, will be that. There you go. Micro that, that, that'll be the time, can dream. eventually. Um, a microphone can dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, before we, before we finish up, why don't we go ahead and go around and share where everybody can find us on our non-GameCast stuff. Your Twitter, your YouTube, whatever. So where can we find you on the internet, Count? A.K.A. Snowy? A.K.A. Yes. Count Fracula? <laughs> All of AKA these the names. Best in the biz? Lies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even Shocker agrees. You can't disagree now. <laughs> My Twitter is well. The the name on it is Count Fracula, surrounded by two Ace of Spades because I'm mourning Lemmy still a year and a half after he died. Uh, but the at is Snowy Duffield, one word. And my YouTube is the custom URL fucked up, so it's Snowy Metal Nerd Dude Duffield. So yeah, go deal with that. And, yeah, I know. And I also do photography at spectrumphotography.co.uk because I'm going to plug that for no reason whatsoever. Do it. Vox, where can we find you, man? Well, you can always find me on YouTube. Literally just look me up, The Voice 106.7, because I don't have a custom URL yet because I'm not popular enough. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you can also find me on Vidme and uh, you can also find me on Twitter at The Voice 106 underscore 7 or something or rather. I apologize. I'm on Percocet. I can't think straight right now. <laughs> hey, man, we're just Shall glad you're here. Shall I look it up for you? <laughs> <laughs> the voice uh, 106 dot underscore seven. Thank you, Snowy. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. There you go. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook. And where can we find your sexy beard, Shaka? Uh, well, you can find me, easiest place to find me is just on shockapanda.com. It's got links to all my stuff. Where I spend most of my time is mixer.com forward slash shockapanda, where I go live for 20 plus hours a week and hang out with all my friends and fans and the family. And it's it's a good time. We we, we hang out and uh, I'm, I'm super duper excited about where that's going and how it's growing. So I would love to have you all come check that out. Uh, it'd be fun to see you on there live and visit with me a little bit. And then, of course, easiest way to get a hold of me is at Shaka Panda on Twitter. And yeah, yeah, that's about it. Uh, Vox, why don't you take us out, man? <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. Thank you all so much for joining us on this episode of Run Right, Don't Die. Don't forget to give us a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you download this podcast. It really helps. I'd like to thank our special guest, Count Fracula, a.k.a. Snowy, a.k.a. not the best in the business. Be sure to swing by <laughs> nice. officialgamecast.com for links to our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter accounts. Speaking of Twitter, you can follow us on Twitter at game underscore cast underscore TV. It's a great way to reach out to the GameCast team. And of course, if you'd like to check with me or any of the GameCast gang, join us in the official GameCast Discord by following the link in the show notes or description of this video if you're watching us on YouTube. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. And remember to run right and don't die. Why don't we go ahead and take a quick? Oh my God! <clears throat> uh, Why don't we go ahead and take a quick? Yeah. What? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Damn it!